Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So today, I wanted to talk about some of the recent HackerOne reports that have been shared with the community from the flow. I wanted to take a couple of days and kind of digest the information that I saw and hopefully come back and present that information to you where it is crisp and clear. Let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. So the very first report that I wanted to talk about was this report, which was a size T to int vulnerability in XFAT leads to a memory corruption via malformed USB flash drives. And it says the summary here is a heap-based buffer overflow can be triggered by a malformed XFAT USB flash drive. Now, if we scroll down into this a little bit, we can see that this was originally submitted to PlayStation right around September the 15th, so about one year ago. And if we scroll down into this, we can see on September the 21st, which was just five days ago, that this had been disclosed to the public, that the report was closed and the status was changed to resolved over here on December the 7th. So I'm sharing some of these dates where you can kind of get a bit of a time frame. So obviously what this is referring to is for the PS4 9.00 jailbreak that we currently have. And then for the date port was closed was right here on December the 7th. Now, if we head over to the Wikipedia and look up PlayStation 4 system software, what we can see is, is that on December the 1st, 2021, Sony released the update, which was 9.03, which claimed to have improved system performance. Obviously, we know that it was much more than just improved system performance, but what was also included in this update here was a patch to this XFAT bug that was in the system software. Now, again, this was paid out a bounty of $10,000, and it just recently, again, was disclosed, which is why it started coming across all of our Twitter feeds. And really, the case is closed on this one. The only systems that will benefit from it is obviously on a PlayStation 4, 9.00, or really lower. So the second one here says, use after free in set SOC OPT IPv6, etc. It says the PS5 is vulnerable to this report, which easily grants kernel access to an attacker. This vulnerability has been reported by me, which again, this is the flow zero, two years ago when the PS5 did not exist. Thus, this should be considered a new report and not a duplicate. I was able to use this vulnerability in conjunction with the BD-J exploit chain to gain kernel access. So let's look at the report here. So it says that this was reported right around January the 4th which was nine months ago. And if we scroll down into this, we can see that there's been a couple of comments that's happened in the last 17 hours and five days. But this was disclosed on September the 20th, which was six days ago. So if we go to this report right here, that's going to land us over to this page. And we can see from this page that this was three years ago that this was submitted. And in this summary, it says, due to missing locks and these options, it is possible to race and free the buffer while it is being handled. The structure contains pointers that can be hijacked to obtain arbitrary kernel read-write primitives. As a consequence, it is easy to have kernel code execution. The vulnerability is reachable from a WebKit sandbox and is available on the latest firmware that is 7.02. And this obviously led to the 7.02 as well as the 6.72 jailbreak. You may have watched videos from people like Blaine of where they basically showed you how to use a web exploit and then 
be able to run this kernel exploit that the flow zero had submitted. Now, there was some sample code in here, which is really what Slayer's Govi had used in order to provide that kernel access on those 6.72 and 7.02 systems. But backing up just a little bit here, this report again was a completely separate report but what had happened here was was that the playstation 4 had patched this in the later firmwares we would like to let you know the vulnerability you reported has been patched via ps4 system software version 7.50 here we can see that they fixed this on the playstation 4 7.50 but they made a mistake and on the playstation 5 they did not fix it which is why he asked here that this should be considered a new report and not a duplicate now with this report here he was taking advantage of again chaining the kernel access with a webkit vulnerability here he is basically using the bdj exploit chain to gain the kernel access here and this is really the missing puzzle to the very famous screenshot that he shared back here in november of 2021 which had a playstation 5 and had a debug settings so now we're starting to get all of the pieces of the puzzle here so the first one was the user land execution which was bdj and that was obviously presented here just a couple of months ago at Hardware I.O. where he presented his talk, BD-JB Blu-ray Disk Java Sandbox Escape. And then at the end of this, he actually showed a demo it's right down here where it says kernel RW or read write primitives obtained. And so in this talk, the kernel read write primitives being obtained was not a part of it, but they are going to be a part of an upcoming talk at Hexacon. So it says, we're pleased to announce the second invited speaker by the name of Andy, the flow zero. Andy will present a new attack vector and a firmware agnostic ROP less exploit on both PS4 and PS5 in his talk. So this is what I can see as a part two. And if we head over to the page here, here is the abstract. So this very much feels as if this is going to be a part two to the talk that we saw over here, which was talking about the user land exploit, which he had permission to talk about because of the disclosure. And now, at least according to this most recent disclosure, he now has the ability to talk about this one freely as well. And then one of the things to really just kind of keep in mind here is, is that remember there are three stages of security so that the PS5 utilizes. So the first one being the WebKit or the user land. We have the user land right now with the BD-J or BD-JB if you wanna say jailbreak. A kernel level, which is this one that is just right here. The one that we don't have is the hypervisor. What I believe we're gonna get out of this is going to be some level of homebrew on a PlayStation 5, but we won't be able to get things such as piracy or being able to play games in the form of PKG files. Now, the last question is probably which PlayStation 5s do I personally think is going to be able to run the PS5 jailbreak that has been recently disclosed by the flow. And for that, I would say if we head back to the main HackerOne report and we scroll down in this, we can see that right here, the report was closed and it was changed to resolved right here on April the 14th, which was six months ago. If we go to this website, we can see that on April the 14th, system software 5.02 came out and this was a minor update. And I do believe that 5.02 is is where it got patched. They just said this system software update 
improves system performance. So that is kind of my take on all of this news. I hope this helps and doesn't cause any additional confusion. Let me know in the comments. Did I get it right? Is there something that I missed? Sound off. Anyways, thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out.